गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन आई एम थैंकफुल टू आई टी गांधी नगर फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस वंडरफुल सेमिनार एंड आई हैव बीन यू नो काइंड ऑफ टोल्ड दैट टूडे इज लाइक बरियल इज काइंड ऑफ यू नो ओवर पावरिंग एवरी सब्जेक्ट सो एवरीबडी इज वॉन्ट going around, around so i am continuing the same thing <laughs> so um i will be not talking uh, what valime sir has uh, discussed i will uh, it's a more of a theoretical mine is uh, i am based on the, the anthropological analysis which i conducted uh, uh, in on rakhi gadi skeletal samples the samples were given by archaeological survey of india it was uh, sent to uh, deccan college uh, a uh, long time back uh, it's been long time uh, i have not published on this paper so i have to publish it's a uh, so we'll start with this this is the first time actually we are discussing about uh, rakhi gadi specimens analysis so uh, i'm not going to go here further because everybody knows harappa now i don't have to say anything regarding that so rakhi gadi is uh, uh, the site where uh, um, suraj bhan first 1969 he uh, then later on amrindranath has excavated in 1999 and 2000 by si later on uh, professor shinde excavated and this particular uh, presentation is based on uh, amrindranath excavation i have not uh, got any uh, information from uh, not got in the sense i have not included anything regarding uh shinde sir's excavation or later on whatever excavations were uh, conducted by asi and currently also it's going on so uh as you know that there are uh, three uh, four uh, seven mounds and out of that rjr1 rjr2 and rjr7 these are the mounds where uh, uh, you can have uh, you have the these burials and um, out of that uh this is the dates what which was given by the excavator dr amindranath uh, and this paper was published in man and environment uh, and uh, these dates are uh, so it is showing somewhere around going along with the uh, other harappan sites uh, so uh, according to the report there are from uh, like rjr 1 2 uh has skeletons and uh, overall there are 11 skeletons uh which we have studied uh one skeleton is there from rgr7 one skeleton is there in the national museum uh so we did not study that uh, material and uh, there are two skeletons from rgr2 and there were a few skeletons from rgr1 but uh, we didn't get those uh, materials in deccan college so i have no idea about the material which was the, from excavated from rgr1 so uh, the standard methodology was followed like inventory age and sex demography understanding the demographic but as you know that demography cannot be studied so uh, uh, so much because there are hardly 11 individuals seven, nine from uh, rgr 7 and 2 so it is actually not just we are just trying to understand the age and sex distribution among the skeletons uh, then morphology this is standard methodology metric analysis stage your estimation and paleopathology these are the areas where uh, these uh, uh, i um, kind of incorporated in the studies so uh, this is the rgr uh, rgr 7 skeletal 1 uh, skeleton 2 and 3 these are like uh, complete almost complete skeleton some of them are uh, complete some of them are very fragmentary uh, so as uh, like you know the rgr 6 has only one skull okay skull but because rgr7 burial uh, was made on the top of uh, on the rgr6 so basically they dig the earlier material earlier uh, burial grave and then they redeposited the uh, rgr7 so that's why you have only skull which is not in the disturbed context context but later on you uh, you are having the rgr7 uh, then you are having other rgr7 uh, skeleton Four and RGR seven skeleton eleven. So you can see they are really beautiful. They look really beautiful 
don't see i like skeletons so i always say beautiful skeletons so <laughs> so uh, these are the skeletons interestingly in rgr2 skeleton uh, skeletons there are only two skeletons from rgr2 and they are in a really different way of more burial so they are not as laid properly uh, they are all flexed so this is a child around 8 year old child and it is kind of looks like he has uh you might feel uh, bad but it looks like just dumped into the burial pit because it doesn't have any orientation it doesn't have it's like one hand is going below other legs is if you can see here the legs is stretched here so it's really in a weird context weird way there it has been buried uh, or maybe thrown inside the pit or something like that we are not very sure and rgr2 this is a male skeleton it is in a flex position and there is there are the bricks the problem with these two burials are the chronology uh, as we know that these burials belongs to harappan context but uh, there is some issue with the uh, uh, these two burials because there is no pottery associated with it there is no proper grave uh, line kind of a thing with this burial so it's a bit a problematic when we have to date these specimens and uh, uh so uh according to so i have believed uh, based on our, uh, the excavator that it belongs to harappan context so this is my uh, understanding about it uh so uh, when it came to us in 2003 it's a long long time back so we started working later on some 10 years back because so as you can see the material is not a very good even though it looks really nice on the uh, uh site and it has a nice view kind of a thing but when we when we started working on it you can see the crania here which is you know kind of crumbled with because of the earth pressure you are having the it has a lot of calcrit the soil has a lot of calcrit inside it so it was the the soil and the calcrit was stuck to the bone uh, and it is impossible to remove the soil and get these bones cleaned at all so we tried in the chemistry lab our to you know extremely diluted scl uh, uh, in the water and try to clean we thought that calcrit might help us to clean the material to see the bone surface but it turned out to be this it started this kind of a whitish uh, layer so we stopped it there itself because we just tried that one it did not work uh, at all uh, i think so kal and you were there during this no yeah yeah as tech so sorry <laughs> kalyan was there so uh, yeah so we tried that but it did not happen the way we visualized so it just we just left it there itself so uh, so this is just to show you the uh, demography or the age and sex distribution within the uh, the raki gadi so uh, there are like um, six uh, adults actually uh, six no. these are the three males and three females there is one child and there is one female a uh, male here and there is one female here so uh, out of 11 there are um, these uh, six and so if you can see the age uh, categories other than this young child um, there is that young child okay around 8 years rest of them are in the middle age or old age category it's not we haven't got anything young age like maybe young adult or something like that so one adult is there because only one tbia part of the tbia was preserved so we cannot go beyond saying it it is was belongs to adult individual uh, so here uh, we are having the stretcher estimation uh, uh, so uh, what we identified is uh, the um, male have uh, average height of around 170 Point thirty one and female is somewhere around one fifty nine forty five. That is the average for the female uh, stature estimation we could identify. Like because as you can see, sample size are really uh, less. Uh, so uh, so paleopathologically, this is interesting specimens to. Uh, so this is the child from R G R two. Uh, this is R G R two. This child, so it has uh, these uh, lambda lambda ossicles are there, extra bones, which is morphology, 
extra bones in the cranial sutures. Uh, at the same time, it has a porosity within the so and as well as enamel hypoplasia, which is the uh, nutritional uh, deficiency which can, which gets recorded in the uh, teeth. And uh, again, the porosity within the crania, which also tells you about nutritional deficiency. So this was one child which was uh, telling us that uh, this child had a, some kind of a nutritional deficiency with it. Uh, this is extremely interesting and very controversial uh, specimen. This is Arja 2, uh, skeleton 2. Uh, it is a male. Uh, it is somewhere around 35, 40, that middle age. And whatever you see these degenerated uh, holes, these are caries sicca. This is known as a caries sicca. It, te it, te uh, it tells you about the triponormal infection on this specimen. Okay, so the triponormal infection has a lot of problems identification because it is it has some uh, social stigma attached to it. So basically, I am talking about syphilis. So it has that. Uh, so triponoma is there in this particular specimen, and if we consider this as a Harappan specimen, this is going to be the oldest specimen which has a a. a, a Triponama in India, uh, first evidence and probably in the world also because wherever we are having triponoma infection, they are hardly uh, 1500 or later, mainly the medieval, but very few, very, 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 very few are from the uh, early BC, but most of them are medieval. So if it is a medieval, uh, if it is, that is why I said the chronology is really problematic for this specimen. I cannot publish it properly because the chronology sucks here. Uh, but if it is there from the Harappa, it is really uh, uh, amazing finding. This, we did the CT scan of this uh, specimen and you can see this Kerry Sika and this bone uh, degenerative bones, lesions and everything, it's actually, um confirms that it belongs to triponoma infection so this is interesting uh other than this we are having this uh, uh young individual which has this uh, uh temporomandibular joint issues like basically the chewing during that if you have an excessive muscle at uh, movement in this area like you are chewing or sometime in today also today's world also if somebody has that habit of you know, uh, putting two jaws together very tightly, they also develop sometimes because of some kind of a trauma to the mandible or something. You are having the TMJ or the temporomandibular junction, that area, some issues. So this also found in this uh, young man. Uh, then uh, this is um, uh, a socket which is on the femur. So it shows a particular way of uh, joint in the from, uh, pelvic and femur, basically. This particular thing, uh, these are the, uh, the facets, extended facet. So kind of horse riding or uh, squatting facet, all these things where the joints are little bit twisted ca can have developed this kind of um, uh, horse riding means any animal riding. I don't want to put horse and harappa together. I'm sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> so anything like that. So uh, this is what you have having then the clavicle again lot of rugged activity which has done on the you know uh, using upper arm can result into different kinds of uh, uh, extra muscle attachment areas and other things so you are having a lot of things in the uh, in the skeletal remains. Interestingly, this is the first time we I identified the uh, this is known as a, ta a talus uh, uh, beak. Okay, talus beak is means mainly the ankle. So ankle where the tibia or your lower uh, leg is, uh, you know, connects with your foot. So that area where you are having the excessive uh, attachment or excessive uh, some kind of activity, which can result into this is called as a talar beak. Okay, so this talar and calcaneus, these particular um, joint gets affected because of... Uh, rigorous leg uh, leg activity so this was found in two individuals out of uh, nine individuals this was found in two individuals so quite a, a good percentage so again you can see another individual which has which is male 45 to 50 years old and earlier was uh, i think so female around uh, this 
So this is very interesting. We could identify. Uh, as you can see, the bones are not in a really good conditions. But still, uh, if there are certain changes in the bone, we can identify these bones uh, pathology because this is badly damaged uh, lumbar vertebra and this is a uh, uh, the the sacrum where you can have a lot of yes thank you it's going to be over <laughs> so this is like uh, you are having a joint joint issues uh, here in the so you are having the arthritic lesions on the back here so uh, this was found uh, in the uh, this particular 45 to 40, 50 year old female this particular female had a lot of issues of health okay so according to the our understanding that if it is a fee, uh, it is a old individual obviously all these degenerative pathologies you will able to see on the bones uh, so dental pathology includes uh, um, antimortem tooth loss then there is a tartar accumulation this tartar accumulation can be useful for um, understanding the diet. Uh, if Kalan is interested, we can give the sample so that he can under identify uh, <laughs> the the what the food whatever food uh, that person was having. So these things can be done. Then there is a dental rotation that kind of crowding. You can see the heavy attrition. You can see on this, which tells you about uh, the age as well as the kind of diet these people were having maybe the very coarse diet probably this person were having so you are having this kind of a dental crowding which also uh, indirectly reflects the uh, malnutrition during the young age because this is an old individual obviously they had survived so it means that during the old age or during the young age that that person might have uh, experienced some kind of a nutritional deficiency. Then you are having the antimortem tooth loss. So this is also uh, we were able to find on it. Uh, so uh, just to uh, kind of summarize the different pathologies from the uh, Araki Gadi. So you are, uh, if you see, most of them are related to the old age uh, degenerative pathologies. Not much interest uh, other than the uh, RJ2 skeleton 2. Uh, most of them are a routine, what kind of a work we are uh, we, generally we identify on the skeletal remains other than those teller of beak that is seen. So uh, it is uh, this. And this, uh, some features what we could identify. So this is my uh, second last slide. So, uh, so the craniometric comparisons were conducted, but only on one skull of male and female because that was the only complete skull we had for the our observation so we cannot extrapolate that data and make into the population studies so that is the thing then dental metry also was carried away uh, carried out and then the, there are uh, as i told you 11 individuals and only one child in that and four females five males are there the major findings include evidence of the trypanomal infection on rjr male rjr2 male then arthritis is the main pathology which tells you about the stressful lives of that person or that population. Then RGR73 male shows, as I said, that left side leg having arthritis bone marrow. So this particular female had the left side was a problem. So you can say there might be some issues or some rigorous work was happening with the left side than the right side. So that's the one thing. Then RGR's uh, SK45 this indicates this, that arthritis vertebral region and dental pathology. And so this is the general observation we could identify on the specimens. I acknowledge Archaeological Survey of India because they gave us the opportunity to study these specimens. Then Dr. Amindranath who, uh, and Tejas Garge and Professor Walimbe, actually this, this material came to Walimbe sir and later on I started working on it. So, Professor Walimbe, so I am thankful to everyone. And if you have questions, please let me. Am I in rhyme? Yes, thank you.